All right, welcome. So this is the video on Maya 8. So in this, we'll be uh, not really talking about any new modeling techniques or any new tools. We're just going to be talking about just a, a method in Maya to organize your work. So to do that, we use a project folder. Now for our wagon, I know I called it a project, but that is not related to this type of project. Um, but for that, I gave you guys a folder where I just loosely commingled the Maya file and the three reference pictures that you needed for that. They were just all in one folder. That works okay, but the cleaner way, the more professional way, the way that I will be expecting you to work with these things in the future is to use a Maya project folder. So all that is, it's a series of folders within folders that store different things in the different folders. So if I go here and I open up this, so this is a this is a project I already have made, and you can see that there's just a bunch of differently named folders in here: assets, autosave, cache, clips, data, images, blah 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 blah. Lots of different folders in here. All those are for are for you to have. Um, places where Maya knows to look for certain types of files and where to put certain types of files it's exporting. So it's only for Maya to stay organized. As long as you follow the rules of how Maya wants it organized, when you give it to me or I give it to you, we should have no problems as long as we set the project. Okay, so going forward from this, we got Maya scenes, um, we got my uh, we got images and then we got source images so scenes is straightforward that's where your Maya scene files lived that's your Maya files you guys are familiar with that uh, most of you might have seen that your Maya files by default get saved into the scenes folder in the default project in your documents so now you sort of have an understanding of what where that is and what it's for so we have scenes that's for your Maya files we have images and source images which are for images, is for files that leave Maya. So if you take a rendered shot of your things from Maya, it will go by default into the, the current project's images folder. If you're putting files into Maya, so an example would be the reference images we used for the wagon, or you're using texture files like our, our models have today. That is under the source images. So again, it's right there in the name. Images that are being used as a source. Straightforward. So for today, we're going to be using the project that I have given you. Um, whenever we're using rigs, chances are you're going to be using a project file from me. Um, but if you ever need to make a new project, it's pretty straightforward. It's four and a half steps. First step, go to the file menu down to project window and under excuse me sorry about that I'm yawning so under project window it's telling me what my current project is set to which is my cogs rigs the rigs I gave you so it's already set for my example though I'm making a new project so if I'm gonna hit new and I'm gonna give that a name so this will be an MPM test proj and that's going to be saved to this location. So I'll click the little folder. No, I don't want it saved in here. I'm going to put it on my desktop and hit select. So now we'll make a new folder named NMPM test proj on my desktop with folders with all of these names. Here's what I have to say about the project folder names. You never need to change them. Never, ever, 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 ever. Never change the names of these project file things in here. You change the name of the project folder, you don't change these. These are always the same. That's all you need to know about the project window. You hit new, you give it a name, you choose where it's saving, you hit accept. So now if I go to my desktop, there is a shiny new, what are all of these? Oh no, that was my documents. An MPM test proj, if I open that up, there's all of my project folders. Now here's another thing to note about projects. Everyone listen closely to this. Workspace.mel, this file that is in every project, ignore it completely. 
It does not exist. You don't ever need to touch it. Don't open it. It's not a Maya file. It is a script file. It looks like a Maya file on the icon, but it's not. So ignore it. Don't try and open it. Don't try and save over it. Your stuff's going to break. So ignore this workspace.mel file. All right. So that's making a new project. Let's take a look at the project that I've given you today. So if you uncompress this cog rigs folder, you'll get cog rigs Henry Caroline. And in that folder, you won't have the substance one. I have the substance one because I opened it in my 2020. Um, you'll have a scenes folder and a source images folder. There's no images folder or any of that other stuff because it wasn't being used. It just got deleted. I should have probably left them in there so it wasn't confusing. But I'm just pointing out, you can see there's a scenes and a source images in here, which means that this Henry or Cog Riggs Henry Caroline folder is a project folder that we can set. So how do you set or change your existing project to a new project? Remember, Maya will remember the active project set until you change it. Reminder, Maya is a tool and you are a tool operator. So Maya will not know what you're working on unless you tell it what you're working on. So when you need to change your project, go to File, Set Project, and then select the Main Project Folder. So what that means is that when I go to File, Set Project, I just need to go find the folder that says Cog Rigs Henry Caroline, and that is my project because it has the files for the Maya file and the textures in there. I hit Set, okay, and it looks like nothing has changed, but my project is now set differently. Now when I go to File Open, it will be looking in my Cog Rigs Henry Caroline Scenes folder, and there's two Maya files in that Scenes folder. So then I can open up one of these two and get to work. So I'll open up Henry. So um, you may, there. we're hoping that there isn't too many issues. There's been a couple little weird quirks uh, today, but typically the order of operations. So you download the rigs. Typically you'll already have the rigs already downloaded because you're working on your work computer. Then you're going to extract the file. Oh, I saved over this. That's right. That's okay. I can fix this. Um, there we go. Wait, I opened up Henry. Oh, it's referenced in here. That's right. Okay, whatever. So you can see the work that I did in my first period class because I saved over it and I forgot about that. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to unload a reference. So I don't want this Caroline in here anymore. So Caroline I added by creating a reference, which I'll go over in a second. A reference is it just a copy of another Maya file that you're loading in to another Maya file. So in projects, that's good because the Maya files will be in the same project folder. So when you move that whole project around, the Maya files that are referenced together will not lose track of one another. So in my case, I want to get rid of, I want to get rid of my reference that I already have in there and I'll bring in the Caroline that I finished earlier because I have a different version. So remove references by going to file reference editor, right click the reference to remove and choose remove reference. I bring this up because sometimes people accident want to bring in multiple copies of things and they end up with too many. Sometimes they, yeah, there's, there's times when you may want to unload your reference. So if you go to file, reference editor, gives you this. All you got to do is select it, right click, reference, and remove the reference and away she goes. Be gone, thought. Now go to Finder, and I'm gonna grab, where is it, Finger Guns. So I'm gonna put Finger Guns into my scenes folder of my project. So there's my Caroline and Henry. I'll go ahead and paste this. So the other thing that's on here about references 
References again, just copies of other files. So if I want to bring in my finished finger gun scene that I worked on earlier, I would create a reference. Why is step one open Maya? Let's just get rid of this. There we go. File, create reference, select the correct file. Should be within the same project scenes folder. It's not really a suggestion. So if I go to file, create reference, you'll see, hey, there's my finger guns file because I put it into my project. I'm a load finger guns reference. It will load in a copy of my finger guns. So what's great about a reference is that it's linked to the original file. And so if you have multiple copies, if you duplicate this reference multiple times, it's actually pretty lightweight in the sense that it, it only has to load it once and then instance it five times. Long story short, that saves you processing power. Um, so referencing is a good habit to get in. So here we got the finger guns, a... So then we got this guy who's super cool. Whoops. Do I have the, that's oh, the neck. Oh, I don't have the neck gimbal selected. So today we're working with the rigs. There we go. Bingo. So now I got these two rigs in there together. So what we're doing it, um, I think you just can just hit continue through that. And then also if you're on a Windows file and it's complaining about the mental ray things. Um, so let me show you, I'll be back in, okay, sounds good. So one other thing, if you're on Windows, if you're on a Windows computer when you're doing this stuff, you're gonna probably need to fix your renderer at some point by going to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and Preferences. And then in here you go to Display. Under Display you'll find the Viewport 2.0 Rendering Engine and you will change that on Windows. So only if you have a Windows computer are you doing this. Change it to DirectX 11. That might, uh, that's been an issue on some of the things. I know we ran into that ourselves uh, earlier. So um, yeah, make sure you fix that. It's been a pretty good catch all. I had one other kid that helped it with them with it today. So, otherwise I don't think the mental ray thing, where is it at again? Windows, settings and preferences, and then under preferences, and then under display, you change this here. So it's here, here, here. Under display, you change this. All right, so the assignment. First thing, set your project. So as a reminder, we're setting it to our cog rigs, Henry Caroline, set. Then you're gonna open up one of the rigs. I have already tweaked my rigs. So I'm gonna open up Henry. Here, actually I'm gonna go open up Caroline because she doesn't have references in her scene. So I'm gonna go open up Caroline. And, oh, I didn't save this file. Okay, let me save that. So you're gonna open up one of the files and then you're going to create a reference and bring in the other file. So you should have a Henry and a Caroline in your, in your scene for, for this one. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my Henry one though, cause I already referenced it. So you reference the file in, then you're gonna have your two files in there. So I already did my posing for these ones. So I'm just gonna show you, you just wanna practice with the rig, 
and take a look at what there is to offer. This is just our, our very much our training wheels on ramp to using these. We will be using them a lot in the near future. So you can do things like, so on the foot, there's a bunch of settings on the foot. I encourage you to check out. There is, so remember, you can select the channels over here and use the middle mouse button in the uh, viewer to change these values. So I'm just middle mouse button and scrolling this heel roll. You can change the heel, yeah, ooh, okay, don't do that too much. <laughs> You can change the foot pit. Oh, I can put her up on one toe. A little bit like that. Foot bank, a little bit like that. Damn, this pose is getting dynamic now, actually. This is legit. So what I will say is that, uh, folks, you don't, this one isn't about creating the really goofy ones where you drag their jaw all the way to the ground and do things like, uh, like this don't do this like, this isn't this isn't for this mate you can do a couple of these for fun like in send screenshots on your own but like I'm looking for you to not break the rig because we will we will be using these so you want to get practice with that really don't like that true also her eyes have a pull vector her eyes follow the spectacles so what that means is that if you drop her way down her eyes are gonna roll into the back of her head so you gotta be careful about how you're moving people around additionally I will point out on the fingers apparently this is not the case on Henry which I didn't know I'll have to look at the Henry model so I'm clicking the knuckle here on the on the index finger there's a curl value that curls all of those in. So you'll see I did that with each of these. I increased the curl value. Um, this is the IKFK switch. You can move metacarpals or carpals. Which ones? I think these are the carpals and these are the metacarpals, right? Some Anyone know the specifics on those? Oh, the, uh, are the fingers are the carpals and the ones in your palm are the metacarpals. Does anyone know this, if that's true or not? can't remember um, but yeah so we got her doing the finger guns so you're just gonna go through here and tweak things I would suggest working your way up from the bottom the other things to keep in mind these are the eyes for your knee this is where your knees are pointed towards so this is called a pole vector you can see the pole going on that vector it's right there in the name so this is the pole, this is the vector. <laughs> so wherever you move that. Additionally, the big the big uh, movie thing on the bottom moves the whole thing around. So you can move the character off, off one another. Um, let's see. Oh, you can like change which controls are on and off on here okay that's cool what about this one anything on here no so again check out the uh, there's one for the base of the feet and then there's this one which I think is just manually controlling the toe um, this is an right knee breaker so this is if you want to break your knee okay don't use that that much the hips Hips matter, folks. So pivot, feel how your pelvis moves when you like shift back and forth and how weight is being distributed. So like right now I have the hip more weighted so that his left leg is mostly supporting the weight and then the right leg is just sort of out there stabilizing, but there's a little bit of hip tilt in here, important stuff. His, this is his spectacles. This is where his eyes go. For whatever reason, his spectacles is actually bound to his head. So it actually moved when the head moved. So that's good. All right, let's see here on his carpals. Hey, he doesn't have a, a control there. I think it's on this. No, it's on one of these. 
I swear he has controls for this. Because I did it one time. Is it on this? No. Is it on this? No. Really? Huh. Well, that sucks. Okay. I'm just double checking here. I don't see it on any of these. Yeah, okay, whatever, whatever. So if you wanna roll those fingers, you're just gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. Rotate tool, you select these three. Start here. Ugh. Object mode, make sure you do not break the rig. You do not want to delete these uh, control rings for the rig. Okay, so I'm on my rotate tool and then you can just rotate them manually like that. So again, if you wanna do the finger roll on Henry, you just gotta do it manually. Select one, shift click the other, rotate tool. Okay, so that's really the assignment. Pose them up, try it out, try the rig. Play around with it. You'll notice that most things cannot be controlled with the move tool. So if you press W, you see it's all grayed out. Go to the rotate tool. That's because most things are pivoting within a socket. So they just rotate around within the socket point. Or they, you know, can't be moved out of your body. Another thing. Your movement begins it with your clavicle. Please do not neglect the clavicle controls. See how this changes the position of the arm socket before the arm even moves. So honestly, I probably should roll this forward even more. All right, a little less. There we go, perfect, perfect. Um, and then so you can also check out the face rig stuff. I wouldn't go too nuts with it because we're gonna cover it more in depth in the future, but you know, you can control things like, there's four main ones for the lips. So if you wanna like just shift them around a little bit, I wouldn't do anything. I mean, you can, if you wanna be goofy and you wanna just <laughs> but you know, don't. What I don't want to see is like, oh, look what I did. Oh. 